Hi, I'm Isaac. I'm going to be covering how to create a fast HTML annotation app. This time around, I'm going to be doing it with AI using AI coding best practices and context. I'm going to show that here. I'm going to cover some of the context stuff briefly. I'll cover it a little bit more in the live talk, but this can show the actual application of those concepts. The reason I say this time around is because last time in the previous cohort, I covered fast HTML, how it works, how HTMX is done, and how you might code it yourself and really understand the framework. The reason I'm doing it differently this time is because you already have access to all that other stuff because the talk is free, the code is free, all of it is free and publicly available. And this gives you the ability to go back and look at that to get that information and also see this. I am teaching an AI coding course coming up. Students of Hamill and Trey's AI evals course do get a very large discount on that. So check the Discord for that if that's you. Otherwise, let's jump into it. Here is a fast MCP server. So this is an MCP server that's running that's going to give me and the model a little bit more context. What it's going to be give it the ability to do is start and stop the application. It's also going to give it the ability to use Playwright in order to go click on things. So it can click buttons, it can click links, it can navigate around the app. It will allow it to look at the browser console logs, which isn't something you'll be able to really get very easily with static context. So you really need an MCP server or some sort of rule tool in order to do that. And the server logs. And so that gives the agent a lot more ability to get all the context that it would need. Typically when you're making a web dep app, you build it and then you stop and then you go into the app and then you can click around. That's one of your tests and navigate around. This gives that same ability to the agent. The second thing is static context. I have these ruler files which cover information about how to do Monster UI, the API. It covers a little bit about fast HTML, how I like to structure stuff, how records work, all kinds of stuff there. And the nice thing about a ruler file is that it can be exported to all kinds of places. So in this case, I'm going to say ruler apply. And if you just do ruler apply without any config file, it's going to export it to 16 different agent configurations. And so I'm just going to say agents. I'm just going to say cursor and Claude. And what you'll see is that automatically created the dot cursor directory with that, as well as the Claude MD file. And so it gives you one thing to update to make all your agents work if you're and all your tools work, depending on the format and the files they need. The next thing we do is we launch Claude. We can see with slash MCP that we have our MCP server running. We can navigate around to see the get console logs, navigate clicking elements, all the stuff that I said, and a little bit more is here. And so we can see that is connected. Now let's get into building it. So if you're going to be doing an agentic approach, you should create some sort of plan and specify documents. All right, create a fast HTML app that lets my domain experts annotate rag results. I have all the data in eval.db, which is a SQLite database. And I'll have all the context about fast HTML in Claude.md, so check that carefully. In this case, I don't really need to say that because Claude includes it, but I'm just trying to be as thorough as I can with these because it only takes a couple of seconds and it gives, and this is the important part. I want two pages, one with a table that shows all the queries to be annotated, and a second with all the rag results. With all, with all the results to be annotated. It should be a basic table that's pretty compact because there's a lot of results to annotate. So compact is best. Uh, what else? Use HTMX. It should probably do that automatically for behavior and store data in eval.db. For responses, this is a internal tool so keep it simple and MVP like, and then I say create a plan.md and then stop so that I can review before work starts. And so here it's going to go, it, I don't know what it'll do. Maybe it'll look at the database. Yeah. Looking at the database there to get the schema, seeing how many results it has, and then it'll create a plan MD file. What's nice about the plan MD file is. You get a nice organized thing. You can see 
what you're missing and you can head off a lot of the complexity, the over complexity that these AI models tend to put in immediately. So there's multiple approaches to, to this. You can work in very small steps with AI and have AI help you step by step. That's really great for some tasks. You can have it work more agentically in other tasks. Yeah, and this agentic approach for something like this, I think it'll work just fine. I guess we'll find out soon. So here's the route. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but typically I'd spend, I don't know, two to four minutes going through this. These aren't too difficult to go through. So I've got, okay, I've got a slash root route, unique queries, compact table, query ID, query text, total document count, annotated count. I don't need a progress indicator. I don't actually need even the query ID. So we can get rid of those. HTMX power inline status updates. I don't think I even need that. And I don't need search and filter. A lot of times there's just a lot of extra stuff that you don't necessarily need. You can leave it in if you want, but it's nice to have things nice and simple. That makes everything easier in the long run. Let's see here. Document ID. Again, I don't need the document ID there. Text, the eval type, quick annotation buttons. So the, this is something I, li I don't like. Show uh, visual if one is already set in the DB. Let's pay button that shows status. All right, notes field. Uh, editable, okay, quick shortcuts, G for good, B for bad. Sure, it works, they're close enough. Okay, this looks uh, all looks pretty fine to me. Again, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this, but I might spend one or two more minutes on this if I was doing this uh, on something really critical, but I think it's probably okay. So go ahead and follow plan.md to implement the app. Remember, you have tools to start, stop, and look at browser and server logs. Testing. All right, perfect. So we now have our diff. This is one thing that I like about using cursor is that, or VS Code, the, cloud, the cursor integration with VS Code I could modify this diff inline. I would probably spend a little bit looking at it just to see. I don't like this inline JavaScript, so that might be something that I'd ask it to change. For now, let's go ahead and accept it, and we'll take a look at what it's produced. So typically when you get to this point and you've created an app often, and you actually do this along the way, is you run it, and then you go, you click around your app, you navigate to the buttons, see if it actually works. You check the logs if there's an issue. And this is it using the MCP server now, where the MCP server is allowing it to start the app, navigate around, look at the browser console errors, take a look at the, you can now query the database, see if the database is there. It can navigate, it can click elements. See, in this case, it's clicking a, the good button. And so while it doesn't necessarily have all the, the visual aspects of it, doesn't necessarily know what it looks like completely, could add like an MCP to take a screenshot or something, but it doesn't have that, but it gives it a lot of the stuff that I would do. And so it tends to catch some errors before it gets to me, which is nice. And as you see, while it's navigating around, I can as well. This looks pretty good. I think this progress bar is a little overkill. We get 400 documents to one. Bad. We can look at coenzyme Q. So we've got a little bug there. Let's see if it's finding this bug. Oh, yes. It's solid as a 404 error. So it's going to go ahead and fix this. And now we can go ahead and stop and restart the app. And so while I'm sitting here working with it, these kinds of tools are, in context, is pretty important in order to get longer running agents to work very well as well. You can see here, I tried to click a good button, check the server log, saw the post request, 
now it's going to see that the post request succeeded. It's going to go check the database. All right, needs to fix the this. Experience a different update pattern. Okay. It's going to use raw SQL instead of the fast late thing. I think for this application, that's totally fine. I'm a big fan of just raw SQL personally, but yeah, there's also tools for this. So let's take a look. See if it's here. Let's go back to our, so we've still got this. This looks pretty nice. Let me go into Consum Q. Okay, great. It looks like I've got notes and goods and bad, and I can say, hello, mark this as good and bad. Bye. We see, let's refresh the page here. Go back, make sure it's storing. Hello and bye. So we can see we got a pretty decent app pretty quickly with this. Yeah, so this is this is pretty fantastic. Here's the query, here's the documents, here's our annotation. We can go next and previous if we want, or back to all queries. And yeah, so that's that's how all this works. Again, if you're in Hamel and Trey's course, there'll be a big discount code, bigger than you'll get anywhere else. So check that out. We've got a Substack. Eleanor and I have a Substack where we share lots of free materials on AI coding. Yeah, we'll go ahead and check that out. That is at Elite AI Assisted Dev, Elite AI Assisted Coding Dev. I'll put that in the comments of the video as well. And yeah, there's just there's going to be FAQs that we're just adding, guides. There's tool reviews, things like for AMP. I tried it on a tool sitting out with the CEO. So yeah, go ahead and give this a follow. You get a lot of free material there. If you want to take the course that's paid, that's great, but there's still a lot of free stuff. All right. Thanks so much.